This movie is going to be about empirical and molecular formulas, or how do we really know what's inside a chemical? First, we need to define some term. We're going to be talking about empirical formulas and molecular formulas and percent compositions. Now, an empirical formula is just a code for the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound. And you always get an empirical formula by finding data in a lab. A molecular formula, on the other hand, is the actual whole number ratio of elements in a compound. And it's always a multiple of the empirical formula. So let's look at some examples of this and then we'll probably understand it a little bit better. So you've got H and O. If I gave you an H and an O, that is the lowest whole number ratio that you can have between H's and O's because you have one H and one O. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's a formula for a real chemical that has HO. But there is a chemical that is H2O2, and that is an, a molecular formula because it's a multiple, it's twice the empirical formula. Give you another idea. Um, you can have CH4 as an empirical formula. There's one C to every four H's. It's the lowest whole number ratio you could possibly have. So if we look at this, we can say, well, is there a multiple of that? Well, what if we multiplied everything in there by three? So we'd have C3, H12. Or we could multiply everything in there by six and say we had C, C6, H24. And we could do that. So in molecular formulas are always bigger or have more atoms in them than an empirical formula. And the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio. So I'll give you one more counter example in this case. What if I gave you uh, C2, uh, H6, O4? Is that an empirical formula? No. It is not the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound. It could be a molecular formula for a real compound, but the empirical formula for that, since all of these are divisible by two, you've got a two, a six, and a four, so we can divide them all by two, divide by two, and we'll wind up with an empirical formula that's actually CH3O2. I'm not even sure if that chemical exists, but if it did, that would be the empirical formula. We're just going to jump right in here. Um, as I said before, we're talking about empirical formulas and molecular formulas, and there's one last thing we need to talk about, which is your uh, percent composition by mass. So if you have a couple, and that couple has one boy and one girl, you could say that it's 50% boys and 50% girls. But in chemistry, we never talk about per, uh, percents in terms of the actual number of particles. Um, we always talk about the percents in terms of the mass that they contribute. So take myself. I weigh close to 200 pounds. My wife weighs a little over 100 pounds. So even though we are 50-50 boys and girls in that relationship, I'm actually two-thirds of the weight, or I'm 67% of the weight, and she's 33% of the weight. So we're always going to calculate a percent by the mass. So it's by mass. We will always calculate our percent by the mass. So let's dig out the information going slowly through the problem. You're told right up front that we've got four grams of hydrogen. So I'm going to try and organize my data in a table. You don't have to use a table, but I prefer just to stay organized in these things. And it says my hydrogen has four grams. If I read along further, it says I have 36 grams of a product. So that's going to mean that my total mass is going to be 36 grams. Um, and then the problem just asks me for a percent composition, an empirical formula, and a molecular formula. So our first problem is we need to figure out how much mass of oxygen I have. Well, if my total mass is 36 and I have 4 grams of hydrogen, that leaves 32 grams for oxygen because my total, 36 minus my hydrogen, has to be equal to 32 grams of the missing element. So now let's do a percentage. A percentage is always a part, oops, a part over a whole is going to be my percentage. So in this case, let's take the part, the 4 grams of uh, hydrogen, 
and divide by the total mass, which was 36 grams. And that's going to give me uh, 0.11, or 11%. I'm just going to round, keep it a whole number. Uh, you could actually give me three significant figures here. So if we wanted to, we could say it's 11.1%. Okay, let's make that there. So somebody quick would be able to tell right now that my oxygen percentage is 89, or sorry, 88.9% uh, oxygen just by saying, well, my, my percentages have to add up to be 100%. So if you wanted to solve it the long way, you would say, um, I've got 32 grams of oxygen, that's my part, and the whole mass is 36 grams, and 32 divided by 36 is going to be 0 0.888. Uh, 0.888 as a percentage is going to be 88.8 or 88.9 when you round it. So there's my percentages. Again, you do percentages by mass, so we're always going to use the grams. However, this when we move forward from here and we're working with an empirical formula, we need to be talking about particles or moles of particles. So let's take these masses and convert them into moles. To get from mass to moles, as you'll remember from previous videos, we have to divide by the molar mass. So if I take my four grams, let's change colors. If I take my four grams of hydrogen, um, I have to convert that into moles equals x moles. Uh, do I know anything else about hydrogen? Well, I know that 1.00797 grams of hydrogen is equal to one mole. And if I cross multiply here, I'm going to get that, uh, if you solve this thing, you'll find out that you have roughly one mole of hydrogen. It turns out to be about 1.0 moles of hydrogen. We can do the same thing for oxygen. We've got 32 grams of oxygen, and we don't know how many moles that is. But we do know that 16 or 15.999 grams of oxygen is equal to one mole. Cross multiply on that one, and you're going to get 2. Point... Oop, I made a mistake earlier. Um, you're going to get two moles. Now, when I cross multiplied before, I should have gotten four moles of hydrogen. Because one time, when you cross here, one times four is going to be four, and x times one. So we wind up with four moles. Sorry about that. Now, we know we have four moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen. So switch colors one more time. And I'm going to write down here that I have H, and I've got four moles of it. And I've got oxygen, and I've got two moles of it. Is that an empirical formula? No. It's definitely not an empirical formula because both of the four and the two are divisible by two. So let's take the lowest number that we have there and we're going to divide both of them by two and we'll wind up getting H2O. That is an empirical formula. You have a one for the subscript of the oxygen and a two for the hydrogen. That is the lowest ratio they can be in. You can't reduce it any further. Is it the correct formula? Is it the molecular formula? Well, in order to know that, we first have to figure out what the weight is for your empirical formula. So two hydrogens would have a mass of 2 times 1.00797, or I'm just going to round that and call it 2. And the mass of an oxygen is 15.999, so I'm going to round that and call it 16. So a 2 and a 16, my total weight here, my total mass is going to be 18 grams per mole. Now, if I look at that 18 grams per mole, that is exactly the number of grams per mole that the question told me I should get when I have my molecular formula. So in this case, H2O is my empirical formula, and it is also my molecular formula. So H2O and H2O for my molecular formula as well. It's water. Let's try a second one. This time, instead of being given um, grams in the beginning, they're going to give you some uh, percentages. And so we're sort of going to work backwards this time. It says 40% of a compound is sodium and the rest is chlorine. So we know that this is 40%. And if the rest is chlorine, well, you know you have 100%. So 60% of it must be chlorine. Now, 
in order to go forward, we need to know masses. So all we know is a percentage. How do we move forward from that? You can now assume any total mass that you want. You could take the 58.4 up here that the problem gives you for the molecular mass of the, the, uh, the formula of the product. Or what I prefer to do is to assume that you have 100 total grams. And I'll show you why in a second. If you had 100 total grams and 40% of it was sodium, how many grams would that be? It would be 40 grams. And if you had 100, to if you had 100 total grams and 60% of it was chlorine, then you'd have 60 grams of chlorine. So effectively, by choosing my total as 100 grams, all I do is take the percentages and use them as a mass. Now we need to get to moles since moles is going to be our central concept here. So if I have 60 grams of chlorine, how many moles do I have? Well, let's change colors for a second, and I'm going to say 60 grams of chlorine is equal to x moles. Uh, so I need to set up a ratio in order to solve that, but I do know that 35.453 grams of chlorine is one mole. Again, cross multiply, and you're going to wind up having 35.5, let's round it just for x is equal to 60, and if I solve for x, I'm going to wind up getting 1.69 moles. Okay. Let's do the same thing with the sodium. Sodium is 40, so I'm going to, let's move over here. If I've got 40 grams of sodium, and I want to know how many moles that is, then I need to set up my ratio again and say that uh, 22 point nine eight nine eight uh, grams of sodium is one mole. Now where did I get these numbers? The 35.453 and the 22.9898 I got them straight off of the periodic table. So you gotta look them up off of your periodic table and write them down. When I cross multiply on this one I'm going to wind up with 40 is equal to I'm just gonna round for our purposes 23x 23x. Now, when I solve for x by dividing both sides by 23, I'm going to wind up getting 1.70 as my moles for sodium. So I can write down my formula um, Na 1.7 Cl 1.69. Is that a whole number? No. I need an empirical formula, so it must be a the smallest ratio in whole numbers. To get that, I'm going to look at my smallest number here and say 1.69 and divide both of them by 1.69. When you do that, you're going to wind up getting Na with a 1 and a Cl with a 1 as far as whole numbers go. NaCl. Now, you'll notice that they were Cl in the table and then Na, and I rewrote it as NaCl. You must remember your naming conventions. Metals always come first, non-metals always come second. Um, but is NaCl the real formula for this compound? We need to know its molecular formula. So in order to figure that one out, let's find the total weight of our molecular formula. So a sodium we said is 22.99, or I'm just going to round and say 23 for now. And a chlorine is about 35.5 giving me a total of about 58.5 grams per mole. So I need to compare that 58.5 with the real product here, which is 58.4. And they are close enough that we can consider our empirical formula to be the same as our molecular formula.